Hi there, welcome to another radio video from TD Cat Tech. This has literally just come in the door about a, an hour ago. This has been sent to me by Retivis, so the products were, were provided free of charge to uh, take a look at and a well, review, I suppose. But as I always say, I always stress to companies whenever they contact me about this kind of thing that all opinions in the videos are going to be entirely my own and if they're not happy with that approach, just don't send me the product because uh, that's what I want to do as part of my videos. I want them to be useful to people and a genuine, honest opinion, not any kind of sales pitch. But anyway, this is the Retivis RB628RB, that's Romeo Bravo. And uh, this is just a PMR446 walkie-talkie. If you're in the US, this comes under the uh, model name of the RB28, the RB28, so standard Retivis naming convention where they drop the six when it's not the uh, PMR446 variant. And it's just a standard half watt walkie-talkie. Uh, there's nothing particularly impressive about this as far as the specs are concerned, as in it doesn't have kind of any kind of scrambling or any super advanced features. It really is just a fairly standard set of features. So it does, it does look a little bit different. And if you're interested in that, then this, it's just, a, I think it's just a little bit of a different look for Retivis, isn't it, this one? It's a kind of a, I don't know, they sort of, they just tweak things here and there. And this as a whole, looks very different, I think, to your average walkie-talkie. I don't know, it's this, it almost looks like a kind of maybe slightly old mobile phone or something like that. I don't know, I don't know. Just to me, it just feels a little bit different from your standard walkie-talkie. So this is what you get in the box. Two radios. Hey, and guess what? Look at that. It now uses USB-C for its connection on the side. Uh, it pro They provide one of these splitter cables which is nice to see i do like that they've started doing this so you can charge both radios at once from one usb port so effectively it's just a usb a which splits out to two usb c's plug them into both radios at the same time and charge them both i think a nice little charging station which it looks like this supports would be a nicer solution but yeah that's, that's fair enough isn't it i mean and then you've just got two little sort of carry strap things <laughs> to go in there go in there on the side and that's it uh, and, the, and the manual so i'll just quickly show you the manual the box is split there actually looks like it's been bashed a bit i'll quickly have a uh, flick through and just show you the features of the radio so you can uh, take a look at that if you feel the need there you go there are the main features on the radio it's a 16 channel pmr radio and as I say, it just has standard stuff. So it has a Vox function on here and it has a scan function. Um, and apart from that, it's fairly, fairly ordinary. So let's power up one of the radios and see if there's anything different to show you. Okay, let's uh, turn it on. So we do that by uh, pushing and holding the power button on the top here. And the camera is not going mad. You do get this kind of funky magenta color coming up when it powers up so this is on channel one at the moment and a ctcss of uh, 16 right okay so interesting they've gone with numbers i guess have they on this let's just have a look so i think you get through the menus just by pressing this red button here so that's ch change the channel change the code and that's to change the calling tone i think Okay, equally as annoying, all as annoying as each other, I suppose, but it's nice to be able to change that. Scan mode, Roger beep, on or off. So I'll just put that on for now. That's the lot. That's the lot on the menu side of things. And when I transmit using the push to talk, look, the display goes red. And there's the Roger beep. I don't know, I, quite, I don't mind the idea about that going red when you're transmitting. But the question is, does it go green when it receives? Well, I'm going to have to take the other one out, aren't I, to try that out. Oh, wow, that's set to loud. Whoa. How unusual. Look, you go down the volume by pressing right. 
That feels very strange to me. So volume up is left and volume down is right. That feels totally wrong to me. I don't know whether that's an error left in other another type of programming from another type of programming or another you know programming iteration of its programming in another language or something but that feels totally wrong it should be left for down and right for up let me know what you think in the comments uh, maybe that's just me uh but um they're both on they both come up on 116 so let's just try uh Ah, it comes up as blue. Okay, I'll I'll take that. So we have red for transmit, blue for receive, and sorry, magenta when you first turn it on, wasn't it? Yeah, for these for the menus and stuff, it just goes to this magenta color. So take a look closely on the display here. In fact, I'll bring the other one in next to it so you can see it. When I transmit on there, we've got a little arrow that sort of pulsates upwards on the transmit one and then pulsates downwards on the receive radio. Totally unnecessary, but a nice little touch. And then on the top, we have an orange LED or yellow LED for the one that's transmitting and a green LED for the one that's receiving. As far as the rest of the radio goes, there's not too much else to show you. It has uh, all its volume and channel uh, changes through these three kind of buttons. So, you know, selecting something and then moving up and down. Uh, I, I prefer a button on the top. I just prefer a control on the top to just turn and turn a volume button. Maybe that's just me being old school or whatever, but that's my preference. I find it much more intuitive to use just to be able to sort of uh, have this on my belt, feel down towards the radio and just do that change on the channel just turn it up a little bit with your hand you don't need to look you couldn't even see her there on the camera when i was doing it anyway but you didn't need to right because you knew what i was signifying just changing the buttons here i can't really feel on there and just well might be able, yeah it might work but if i press something wrong i don't know where i'm up to then and i have to take it off and look at it and that to me is the big difference between these sort of like oh they look nice they look kind of slim and decent and, and whatever yes it looks pretty but it's not as easy to use and when it comes to using something like a walkie-talkie it's all about what's easy to use and what's going to make your life simple on the side, we've got our sort of sealed ports, which have a standard connector there for the programming cable, or alternatively, presumably a uh, headset and mic. I'm yes, you can. Yes, it's got the it's even got the symbols on there. I didn't spot that, but yes, it's got the uh, headset and mic symbol on there, and uh, and that's where the USB C charging port is. So every time you charge this, you do have to pull this thing out of. Um, place with that unless you have a charging base station to go on uh, which again is another weakness i mean obviously the port needs to be sealed i get that but it's just another weakness where you have to do that every single time you want to charge it you've got to pull that off pull it down this gets weaker snaps off and then you've got a completely unsealed radio don't know maybe i'm just being uber negative and critical but uh, yeah overall they're quite tidy radios i mean like belt clip on the back there what's inside the back the battery is just a standard pack a standard lithium polymer pack 1500 milliamp hour capacity so not a huge capacity on there but it probably doesn't need to be on a pmr446 you'd get a reasonable uh time out of something like this but it's a, it's a fairly neat package as usual on my walkie-talkie videos, let's just do a quick check on the scanner. So we've got uh, the scanner running across the PMR446 channels at the moment, and the radio is saying it's on 116, which it certainly seems to be. There we go. We've got a CTCSS of 114.8, so it looks like they have decided to use the same CTCSS numbering, so privacy code numbering, as Motorola there with 16, because if I were to put this onto 14... I'm pretty sure that that's the one I tend to use 14. Uh, <laughs> okay, so again, this goes right for down and left for up. Okay, so I do 14, select that. Yeah, and that gives me 107.2, which is uh, the CTCSS that I would normally use on my radios. So there we go. Yeah, we've got simple CTCSS function. In fact, let's see whether which way round see whether it goes right down to DCS stuff on the other sides. One, two, one. One, two, one gives us a DCS of 754. Yep. Yeah. So 
fairly standard stuff. You've got your whole lot on there, 121 privacy codes, in addition to your 16 PMR446 channels. What I'll do now is exactly as I did on my previous walkie-talkie video with the Amazon Basics walkie-talkie, I will use my little Sony recorder here on a voice-activated um, function, and I'm going to put these radios in a downstairs room exactly the same place as I did last time and do a sort of urban range test. So not expecting these things to go further than a couple of hundred meters because it is tough conditions. We're going through houses. Uh, it's a built up area. It's, you know, it's, it's not easy for a PMR446 radio to do more than a couple of hundred meters like that. However, last time I did this test, I did notice a distinct difference in performance between the XT420 here, a much more expensive, but really it's, it's, it's a top performer as far as PMR446 goes. I, I love this radio, always comment on it, and I'm happy that this is a good benchmark for how a radio can perform. And we'll compare it directly to the Retivis RB628. This is a recording of the Retivis RB628 at a distance of two meters. at a distance of two meters. The XT420 at two meters. This is the Retivis RB628 at a distance of 50 meters. The RB628 at a distance of 50 meters. And this is the Motorola XT420 at a distance of 50 meters. The uh, XT420 at 50 meters. Well, this is awkward. I, I kind of want to say good effort, but to be honest, I'm not sure I can even say that. I, I'm sorry, Retivis. I'm sorry, RB628, but that was a terrible, terrible performance. I actually went back and checked the area that I'm recording this in to make sure I didn't have any electrical stuff on that would be interfering with it. It wasn't coming through on the Motorola, but I thought, well, I'll just give it another chance, right? And I redid the test. I checked this first. 
I turned off some extra stuff. So I turned off this because I've got, you know, I try and turn as much stuff off as I possibly can before doing any tests like this to make sure that we haven't got electrical stuff interfering, despite the fact that the Motorola has no suggestion of interference on it. And yet throughout, this had some degree of interference on it. I checked the channel because they're on different channels. I was using channel five for this. I was using channel seven for the Motorola. Checked the Motorola on channel five. No problem. Okay, these are not the same radios. They're not in the same class, of course. These cost about 90 pounds each. These cost about 40, maybe 40 pounds for, for a pair. So a different type of radio, yes, but I'm sorry, that performance was terrible. The radio was basically unusable after 100 meters, whereas this one could still be heard up to 300. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, as far as the radio goes, it's. I, I actually recorded a ton of stuff on my walk back from the test that I do, talking about the things I like about this radio. And <laughs> you couldn't hear any of it, which sort of completely makes all that stuff moot, really, doesn't it? So. Yeah, I think it hold, it feels really nice in the hand. It's a good size. It's really lightweight. It's really just simple to use because you've just got one button on the top, three buttons on the front. And I don't like the buttons compared to the kind of rotary controls and the twist control, you know, for volume and channel changing and things because you can feel what you're doing, as I mentioned before. But you can lock this very, very easily. You just press and hold this middle button and it locks all the buttons to stop you kind of moving stuff about. Uh, it's Yeah, it's nice that it's USB-C. Um... And it looks quite nice too. Let me know what you think. Do you find that range test useful? I mean, I know it's a limited amount of distance, but what I wanted to try and do was one, give you an audio test of the radio. So what you hear coming back is the what you will hear on this radio. Because sometimes, and in the past I've done audio tests where I've connected both radios to a scanner. So both are being received by a scanner and whatever the scanner picks up is what you hear. And that's kind of good for one test, one type of test, but sometimes these radios work really well with each other, but maybe not with another type of radio. So what I wanted to do is switch over to one, an urban range test, a true real life radio range test, not a kind of line of sight situation, a proper how far can you get in a built up area setting. And two, give you the audio quality of the actual radio that will be receiving, the twinned pair of the type of radio that will be receiving your transmission. I hope you find that useful anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think about the radio. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? And um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.